Okay, so in lesson two here, as you can see, we're in Photoshop and we're not inside of Maya. And this is because before we actually go ahead and start to model our iPhone, and first thing I need to do is I need to give a big thanks to Ben Tate for supplying us with those image to, images to actually go ahead and model our iPhone. And before we actually go ahead and model our iPhone, we need to understand how we're going to go ahead and model it. The iPhone itself is a very, very specific and very unique design. And the image that you see here is simply just an image that I've looked for and, and found on Google, which is, uh, I think, through the blueprints.com. And as you can see, there's a lot of detail that's actually inside the iPhone itself. And when I'm talking about very specific designs here, and a very very unique concept behind the iPhone is I'm talking about the actual corners of the iPhone now when we try and model this inside of Maya if we went and said use a polygon plane to go ahead and create the model this is going to give us something that's not I mean it's going to smooth well but it's not going to smooth to the point where we want it to smooth correctly um, even if we lay out that geometry in a way that's all quads and somewhat shaped um, right, in the end, overall, it's not going to be shaped perfectly. So we have to consider, well, how are we going to model this correctly, especially when it comes to the corners of the iPhone body here. And the easiest way for us to go ahead and do that is either use a polygon plane and shape it or which is probably going to be the the best solution for us is the polygon cylinder method where we will create a polygon cylinder and give ourselves enough subdivision levels and enough resolution to go ahead and model the corner properly I'm not talking about the actual face part of the model or you know the sides of the model. I'm actually talking the corners here are going to be somewhat um, problematic and somewhat time consuming to get shaped correctly. And so let me go ahead and take that marching ants square off. And <clears throat> we need to model our geometry so that it's right. And so we're not going to be modeling all four corners of the iPhone obviously because we only really need to make one and one quarter of the iPhone so our geometry has to be like this let me go ahead and take that back a step or two and make the the circle here bigger so we can understand this so our iPhone has to be like this and we're basically going to draw let me go ahead and go back another step here a little bit smaller okay that'll work so our iPhone shape or base shape has to be like this and we need to lay out the geometry properly so that it's going to fit correctly so the easiest way for us to do this is probably draw a double double polygon this way and connect the edges like this but we need to be mindful that of this here so that whenever we go to smooth this this isn't going to give us a sort of weird re um, rendering error or tessellation error maybe even a weird shadow so if we use the concept of understanding how to break the geometry down like this, this is going to help us model the iPhone correctly, especially whenever it comes to the face here, and it's going to be definitely a lot easier to texture, and it's definitely going to be a lot easier to sort of cut in the geometry here for, you know, what would be the speaker, um, obviously the button here on the bottom. It's going to be um, easier for us to go ahead and block that in. And we have to be mindful of all of that. Is we wanted to 
want to be able to tie all of these little miscellaneous buttons and the camera lens in here properly so that whenever we go to texture it and render it and add a, a turbo smooth to it, it's going to give us the ability to do that in a way that it's not going to give us any geometric errors or geometric problems, especially whenever it comes to rendering and lighting. We also have to take into consideration of how of how we're actually going to go ahead and model the buttons here and specifically the plus and minus shape inside of these buttons and so our shape is going to have to somewhat look like this and then we'll have to connect the cylinder to the outside edge <coughs> of this plus shape same thing with the minus shape here as this may look a little bit um, weird and unique but whenever we go to model this you'll understand exactly what I mean because if we went and sort of you know just made a polygon cylinder here it's going to be very difficult for us to go ahead and get that plus and minus shape in the actual cylinder and so we will have to to go ahead and model the plus and minus shape first and then connect that to a polygon cylinder so that we can actually get those extrudes in and so that we can get a hard edge on them. And so in the next lesson we'll go ahead and start modeling our iPhone with this in mind. I'm going to save this image and constantly be looking at it so that I can really understand how I'm supposed to be modeling the geometry for the iPhone.